Thank you for completing this orientation to be approved as a 4-H leader in the Wyoming 4-H program. This session will help you recognize signs of child abuse, procedures to follow if you have reasonable cause to suspect abuse, a review of bullying and suggestions for you to consider so you don't find yourself in questionable situations when you are working with other people's children. It is required by law that any person having responsibility for the care and treatment of children must report to Child Protective Services any instance in which there is a reason to believe that a child is being abused or neglected. Child Protective Services is defined as the County Welfare Department or any other county agency that may be designated as a Child Protective Agency for purposes of receiving reports of child abuse. As a trusted adult, a child may confide in you, so it's important to be able to recognize signs of abuse. Child abuse is defined as a physical injury that is inflicted by other than accidental means on a child by another person. Child abuse also means the sexual assault of a child, willful cruelty or unjustifiable punishment of a child or corporal punishment or injury. Mental suffering and endangered emotional well-being are also defined as child abuse. With physical abuse, you may see unexplained bruises, welts, human bites, bald spots, burns, or lacerations. If physical abuse is happening, a child may be self-destructive, uncomfortable with physical contact, complain of soreness, or move uncomfortably. Neglect is something that is generally seen over time and occurs repeatedly. With neglect, children may have unattended medical needs, consistent hunger, inappropriate dress, or poor hygiene. With physical neglect, a child may, be re may regularly report that there is no caretaker at home, be self-destructive, be fatigued, or listless. Here is an example of how neglect can be misinterpreted, though. Imagine a group of counties who partner on a 4-H camp. One leader became concerned and wanted to contact authorities when a family of children complained about being hungry and not having breakfast. After looking into the situation further, it was discovered that the children's mother was out of town for work. Their father made something they didn't like and chose not to eat breakfast. The youth were well fed, clean, and there were no past or future concerns with the family, so no report was filed. Had there been repetitive or more advanced concerns, the incident would have been reported immediately. Remember, neglect generally occurs over time and on a regular basis. With sexual abuse, it is likely that you will not see any physical indicators. However, you may notice in the child's behavior inappropriate sex play or premature understanding of sex, excessive seductiveness, and touching. Touching may not be appropriate, and there is too much of it. Many times, these indicators for emotional maltreatment can look similar to other physical or behavior disorders, Physical indicators could include speech disorders, delayed physical development, or substance abuse. Behaviors may manifest themselves in habit disorders like sucking or rocking, antisocial or destructive, passive or aggressive behaviors. If a child discloses abuse to you, believe the child. Talk privately and listen to the child. Reassure the child that they have done the right thing by talking with you and tell the child you must report to someone who can help them. Report the, it, the immediately. Do not promise confidentiality. Do not ask leading or suggestive questions. Don't make negative comments about the involved person, and do not investigate on your own. Any person making a report or providing information about a child is immune from civil or criminal liability, unless such a person has been charged with or is suspected of abuse in question. Wyoming statute requires any citizen to report suspected abuse or neglect. You do not have to know or prove anything. A report is not an accusation against a parent or a child, but merely a report of suspicion and should be handled in a sensitive, non-judgmental manner. A person who reports in good faith is immune from liability, both civil and criminal. If you suspect abuse and do not report it, the child or another child is left open for potential abuse in the future and you open yourself up for prosecution.
You can anonymously report. If you anonymously report, no one can follow up with you, though, and it may slow the process down, leading to longer exposure to abuse and more youth being harmed. If you are not comfortable making the report, then you can go through another avenue to cause a report to be made. If you feel uncomfortable, you can always contact the County 4-H educator, and they can make the report on your behalf. If you intentionally file a false report, you may be prosecuted. Unfortunately, we have had a situation where a leader reported unfounded allegations that another leader was sexually harassing youth. There was a personal problem between the leader's husband and the leader in question, so they claimed that the leader was sexually harassing youth during 4-H events. Intentionally reporting a false claim is illegal. Wyoming 4-H has a no-tolerance policy for bullying of any kind. Bullying is not a phase children have to go through. It is not just messing around, and it is not something to grow out of. Whether it is real or perceived, bullying can cause serious and lasting harm. Most bullying involves an imbalance of power, which makes it harder for the person being bullied to talk about it with others, to share what's going on. If there, there is an intent to cause harm, it is not an accident, and it is ongoing. It is not uncommon for youth to start out joking around with each other, and it can escalate to a tense situation. As a leader, please stop any behavior that could be perceived as bullying or cause harm or concern. There are many types of bullying. Verbal, which is the name calling and the teasing. Social is spreading rumors or leaving people out on purpose or breaking up friendships. Physical is hitting, punching, or shoving. Cyberbullying, using the internet, mobile phones, or other digital technology. It used to be that you could get away from the bully by leaving the area. Now people often carry the bully around in their pocket or their purse. Leaders should stop activities that could be perceived as bullying. This includes bullying by youth, parents, or leaders. If you have concerns, contact your County 4-H educator. There are many things you can do to protect yourself when you are working with other people's children. When you plan 4-H events, are there activities where additional precautions may need to be taken? Are there certain facilities you use that may require additional precautions? Always consider if there are additional things you can do to minimize risk to youth. Some basic suggestions include avoid being alone with one child. Have at least two adults present in group situations. Encourage parents to stay and help. Use the buddy system when appropriate. After an activity, ask another adult to stay with you until all the children are picked up. Ask before touching and explain what you are going to do before you do it. For example, a leader teaching kids to clip an animal might need to show them how to use and hold the clippers, which could require touching. The leader should explain what they are doing before they begin, so no one is surprised. Respect boundaries, and expect youth to respect your boundaries. Never play fight or roughhouse with youth. Talk to youth in a positive way and never belittle. Thank you for completing this orientation. Please remember to go to the State 4-H website and complete the evaluation. Once you have completed the evaluation, your, stat your completion status will be forwarded to the County 4-H educator. And remember, after you have finished all of these orientations, please set up an appointment with your County 4-H educator.